Welcome to the Academic Woman Amplified Podcast. I'm your host, Kathy Mazak, tenured full professor, mom of three, and firm believer that the culture of academia needs to change radically. Women are revolutionizing academia within institutions that were not built for us. If you're ready to reject the culture of overwork, kick guilt and overwhelm to the curb, and amplify your voice to make a real impact on your field without breaking down or burning out, you're in the right place. And it all starts with writing. Let's go. Hello, and welcome to the podcast. I'm so glad you're here. Today's podcast is brought to you by my brand new program, Writing Sprint Blueprint. Writing Sprint Blueprint is the perfect program to enroll in to kick off your summer. It is a small-ish program that costs only $27 to join. Yes, it is a what I hope is an accessible little bite of a program that is going to deliver really big in terms of your writing practice. I'll be back at the end of the podcast to tell you about everything that's included in that powerhouse of a $27 course, all about writing sprints. But for now, please enjoy this group podcast where myself and my two coaches, our team's two coaches, Gina Robinson and Rocio Paola Caballero Gil, talk about our latest whole client, we call it, writing sprint. And this was a two-week writing sprint that was open to all of our clients. So anybody who was in any of our programs could do this writing sprint together. And we're going to talk to you about the power of writing sprints, how this most recent client writing sprint went. We're also going to get into what is co-writing and how it works. We're going to talk about writing mindset and the things that you might want to think about in terms of getting your writing mindset in gear. And we end our conversations today Today with some v- advice for you in this particular moment of the semester. We know that for most people on the semester system, if you're listening to this podcast in real time, you are probably at the end and the final throes of the semester getting ready to turn in your grades and get ready for the summer. So each of our coaches has some advice for you as you manage this particular moment and look forward into the summer. I hope you enjoy. Hello. We are here today. We have our amazing coaching staff on the podcast today. So today we are talking about writing sprints. We're going to break down for you the most recent writing sprint that we did as an all-client sprint, which means that we had participants from our four programs, so Elevate, Amplify, Navigate, and Momentum participated in this sprint. We're going to get into all the juicy details, but let me introduce the coaches in case you forget who they are. <laughs> if, you, if you haven't been, if you're not a dedicated podcast listener, then you might not know our coaching staff, who includes Rocio Paola caballero and Gina Robinson. So welcome and so excited to get to talk to you both today about writing sprints. Yeah, we're excited to be here. Awesome. Making all the faces because you can't see me. <laughs> <laughs> You're smiling. It's a podcast. We can't see your smile. Um, it's okay. They can feel the smile. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. Okay. So let's start out with, tell the audience, what's a writing sprint and how do we do an all-client writing sprint over here in our company? I'll start with kind of a, a the metaphor that I like using when I think about the writing sprint, because first of all, I'm a terrible runner. And so all of my running metaphors are, are okay. But when you do say your first 5K, so if you're a terrible runner, a 5K is like a big deal. When you do that first one, after all of the like running that you do by yourself and everything is so isolating and you know you're all alone you get to this 5k and you've got all of these other people with you and that spirit of community and everybody moving towards the same goal just makes everything so much easier you're you know you have to actually keep yourself from doing too much work 
when you're on a sprint because you just get so like wrapped up in the spirit of work. Yeah, I love that. It's that energy that you get from doing things together. Like I mm-hmm. love the the metaphor because like if you've ever done a 5K, you're so much faster at the beginning and then at the end, right? Yes. And it's because <laughs> you're like moving with this group of people, right? When it, then when it, you know it starts to hit, you have to keep yourself from pushing too hard at the beginning if you're an inexperienced runner, also like myself you know, so that you can maintain it. But anyway, so yeah. So Rocio, how do we do writing sprints over here? Well, we, we do it in um, a very specific way. We give a recipe for what to do before, during, and after. And we also kind of like guide our clients through the whole thing with posts and reminders all along the way. We start off by offering a workshop where we kind of like break down the sprint. What is it that we're going to do? And really spend the time answering questions and planning for the sprint. So I think a key component in the sprint is that we are asking our clients to write consistently and commit to, you know, specific time, one to two hours every day for during the week, this for two weeks, which we don't usually do. And so in a way it's, it's almost like we are raising that bar for the expectation of what we are going to commit to do. But then we also spend a lot of time in that workshop pre sprint walking us through what are the resources available, how do we plan for it, actually planning it, making the decisions on what goes or not in that plan. Um, and in that plan, it's not just the basic writing, but it's also you know the, the ways you're going to reward yourself, the milestones, the celebration, the restoring parts. So we take care of all of that before the sprint. During the sprint, we actually have the whole team and the company together figuring out when we post things, what kinds of encouraging things we do during the co-writing sessions and momentum in the virtual groups that we manage, Mighty Networks or Facebook. And even during office hours that they fall in there, any activities that we already do, they already, even momentum mindset has some flavor of how do we keep up with the sprint and not just the writing, but the whole, the writer and everything that the writer might need. And so that's what happens during the sprint. And again, you know, checking in along the way. And then at the end, we have a celebration. Usually it's one with prizes. This time we had like two, maybe three (laughs) because it was needed. Yeah. So again, we we basically do uh, cover the the basics of before, during and after. And all along, what I like of our sprints is that we can see the progress. We can see the tangible wins. But the way we frame it is so that we can focus on the process of things. And so even if you didn't submit something in the end, you still feel like you, for however long you were in the sprint, because you, you know, people sometimes start later, sometimes during, you know, midway. So however long you were in there, you were making progress and you were part of the process and you learned something about yourself. And to me, that's kind of like the wins that I kind of value the most. I do like when people submit things, (laughs) that's exciting and it feels good, but also the people who who say, oh, this is what I learned about myself. That's what I like. Mm, That's good. That's really good. I love that kind of, that self self-knowledge takeaways from doing these kinds mm-hmm. of things together. Gina, do you want to add anything? I saw you writing notes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was. I was just thinking about the fact that sometimes writing can be really like painful and we obviously try to do as much as we can to keep that from happening. And I like thinking sometimes of sprints as a little bit of pain mitigation because you know, for example, you have your article that you will submit at some point, but doing something like a sprint to try to finish it is a way of finishing it without taking everything out of you. You know, a way of finishing it that is slightly more easeful because as PhDs, as professors, we know that we're going to do that work. But like Rocio said, the process, how it feels when we do the work, that's also kind of what we're focusing on here. Because you know, you can churn out an article, but if that process like just about kills you, you're not going to do it very much. So this makes it just a tiny bit more useful. Yeah, absolutely. And I want to just highlight a few things that you both said that kind of what, what I think are like the big, the reason that writing sprints work, right? So one of the things, if you listen to the podcast or if you're in any of our programs, one of the things we teach people not to do, or that we we're like, you can do this if you want, but this is not the method that we teach for getting writing done. We do not advocate for a write every day method. We teach in our programs, 
other ways to get your writing to be consistent, but it doesn't have to be every day consistent and it doesn't have to be a certain number of words a day. And that's something that for, I think a lot of the reasons that people do our programs is that they've tried that write every day kind of method, that kind of folklore knowledge that's out there. And then they have failed at it repeatedly for a bunch of reasons, right? Like I always say that the reason I failed at that was because like something would always happen, you know, <laughs> like, that, like mm-hmm. that was beyond my control or whatever. So we don't usually teach that, but sprints are different. And part of like having a whole soaring system, like a writing system with different parts. And like, I used to call it like a bag of tricks. You don't want to have just one way to get your writing done, like write every day. You want to have a bunch of different ways and techniques that you're going to use strategically at different times. And the writing sprint works because you're not trying to write one to two hours a day every day. You're saying, this is a sprint. It's limited. It's two weeks only, and I'm going to rest on the weekend. So that's part of the reason it works is because it's like a burst of energy on a project. So like Gina mentioned, you can use it to kind of try to get an almost done article like all the way to finish. So something that's been hanging out on your to-do list for a while, you could get it all the way done. You can use it at the beginning of a project to kind of like push yourself, put energy in and make a big leap to start a project. You can do it in the messy middle where, you know, you don't know how close you are to the end and you spend two weeks on it and then you'll, you know, have moved it forward significantly. So there's that. The other things that Rocio was talking about are that when you sprint, you're not, it's not just, I'll show up every day and write for, you know, two weeks. You plan it, like, like you make a project plan. And so the process of sprinting teaches you something about creating a plan and setting goals. And then it also teaches you how fast you do things. And like, was that goal the right size? You know, the only way you're ever going to figure that out is if you try something and observe what happens. And so that gives you that kind of self-knowledge of your writing practice that is going to help you make better predictions about how long projects take and all that kind of stuff. So the writing sprint might sound like a simple thing or a short thing, but it's teaching you so much about yourself And also like about how you can strategically change things up to keep stuff flowing out of your pipeline that that's why I like it kind of as a concept. Plus when we do it all together, you know, we get this collective energy of other people and also prizes, which we (laughs) love to give away. Which we enjoy giving. (laughs) Yes, which we like to give to people. So yeah. So let's talk about some of our client wins or like, what are some things that clients use this sprint for and do people achieve their goals? Like, let's talk about what the clients did with this two week sprint. I love that question, Kathy, because that's something as you were talking about how to use the sprint and you know how we, it's, it's one of the tools. Some clients, no matter where they are in the process, whether they just joined the program. So if they've been with us for a while, you know, they, they have different tools in their bag of tricks, right? And so the ones who have been with us in Momentum for a while, intentionally, we've inserted them into this idea of how do they gather their own data, make their observations on how long things take and what kinds. And so some of them already know this. And when they come into the sprint, it's a little bit easier to be able to do, put it all together, right? So yeah, so what I like about the sprint is that at least, Mm -hmm. you know, over time, I've enforced this idea a little bit more. It's not just for the writing itself. Like we want it to be about a writing project in whatever stage it is. But what I like is that some people, because they're new and they may not know if they're ready or all of these things and they're own things in their head they can use it to learn about their own writing process as you know with the sprint so they I encourage those people who are on the fence to say well if you don't have a a writing project but you want to try it just figure out if you need to make a plan for your year or maybe a a new project that's coming up and so it kind of like gets some of that stress out of the way and so this sprint in particular, I saw that shift. I saw that we had a much more diverse, you know, diversity of projects in what we did. So it wasn't just the drafts and the manuscripts. It was a lot of the 
you know, coming up with a project, planning for a project, Mm -hmm. and also even just planning for their own year. So that's something that I I so much more, you know, marked in in this particular sprint of the many that we've done so far. And some of the wins, you know, go with that. So there were a lot of wins about the process, what they learn of how they write and what they need to keep up with the writing. Some were super clear, you know, submitted a manuscript. There were at least two manuscripts that were submitted. Not that I look at my numbers. One of those was stuck for at least four years. (laughs) And so it was like a big win. And actually that one was moved from super stuck, not a whole lot in it and given the guilty feeling for everything Mm -hmm. to there's a draft and there's something to collaborators so that person could actually enjoy writing other projects that you know they really really wanted to submit it there were two fellowships one submitted and one sent to the mentors even before the end of the sprint a bunch of abstracts and other things so like I said there were a lot of projects done and finished but there was a lot also of the process itself I learned I needed to plan before like on a Monday and a Friday so that I could actually have the the middle of the week to produce what I wanted in Mm -hmm. a focused way and not spend three hours but I could spend 30 minutes so Nice. Yeah. So those were some of the wins. That's great. Rocio, I love the fact that you, that there are some actual tangible wins, but a lot of it is about the change in mindset that people have towards writing. Because I was just sort of looking through some of the comments that we have in the spreadsheet that people really think about their writing and how, how much time it takes and what kind of writing they can do. There are a lot of notes where people say, I updated my sprint plan based on what has been going on. Or, you know, I changed my goals a little bit based on the experiences that I've had in these past three days. And I think that idea, just the recognition that you can set a goal and then check in 10% of the way through, 50% of the way through, 80% of the way through and adjust your goal that you don't have to continue to like work towards something that isn't fitting for you. I think that is a really, really big realization. And it is just the kind of thing that you have to go through a sprint to be able to do. Like that's not something that anybody can teach you. It's just that experience. Yeah. Yeah. And in the whole co-writing room when we're together kind of like enhances all of this because it almost gives you that boost of confidence, you know, whether it's in the chat or just from the people who you already know are your buddies to say, yes, I can take control and change my plan. I can, you know, be working on something and then decide this is a better fit for my circumstances because most of the time when we plan this plan, we have a timeline. We already give them ahead of time, you know, at least a month, if not the actual dates of when it's happening. And we see a lot of people showing up in the workshop. And I know by now we can, we already have a pattern of, this many show up and this many actually start participating in this many. And, and as we go through this friends is, you know, this idea of it's going to be hard. Things are going to pop in and you're going to have to readjust. It makes it a little easier for people to continue and feel like they're making a good use of the time. Even if it's not exactly the one thing that they thought they would do, there's still a milestone to meet. And so to me, that's, that, that whole thing is part of the process and learning about ourselves. And I, and I really enjoyed it. And this is like my third maybe sprint when I'm actually also doing a project as I'm facilitating the sprint with y'all so it's it's intense <laughs> things definitely have but that it's definitely a, a good experience to, to have yeah can you talk a little bit more you mentioned the co-writing sessions so one thing I want to like people to to know is that in our world if you come into any of our programs one of the things that we do is even in the higher ticket programs and in the, you know, in Navigate, you come into momentum. Momentum, we feel, is kind of like the the solid foundation (laughs) for a lot of the other things that we do in the other programs. So momentum is a co-writing program. So Rocio, just explain more about what happens on a, what is co-writing and what happens in a co-writing session. Yeah. So there are different kinds of co-writing from my experience. And I've been doing all of those different kinds of co-writing since, I don't know, 2009. So there are different ways to do it. The one that we use in Momentum is essentially an open space. It's a, you know, a virtual room that's open 24-7. We have set times when people congregate and write together. We're all muted. We're all, you know, working on a specific goal, whatever goals we have. 
we use a tool to track that, but we can also share in the chat so that we kind of like bump each other. And even though it, the room is open 24 seven and there are six sessions through the day that are scheduled and people know to show up for those, then within those, we have at least two that are facilitated by someone in our team. And this kind of like trickles and spreads to the other sessions that are not facilitated by us. But in general, we check in at the beginning, we check in in the middle, and then we check in at the end. We like to celebrate wins. We want to remind each other that it's the process and the wins and gathering the data more so than just the actual win at the end of the day. And so to me, the sprint is almost like an extended prolonged co-writing yeah. session in my experience those are like the ones that like just to have one if you can have experience one good co-writing session and again this, the way we do it at momentum is slightly different than others but if you can experience one good one imagine just spreading that into like a whole week of that same good session for like two weeks yeah. that's a spread to me it's it's such a it's a magical feeling because you feel like you're actually moving the needle you're doing things with people you actually like (laughs) and you're all (laughs) together cheering each other and it's not like you don't you know spend some time in the chat saying hi and you know chatting a little bit you're still focused so it's it's almost like you're producing so much within so little time that makes you wonder why can I not just do this every single time that I sit down to write so it kind of gives you hope for uh, sprints give you hope for the next time that you're sitting down to to write as well yeah absolutely that's great. Yeah. And the the other thing I wanted to talk about, make sure that we talk about, and Gina, you mentioned this, so I'm going to throw this to you. Like one of the things that we work on in Momentum is mindset. And we we work in on mindset in all of our programs, but academics might be like, mindset, what's that? And why I just teach me how to do something, you know? <laughs> like, so maybe Gina, you could talk a little bit about kind of writing mindset and why it's important for actually implementing changes that you might want to make? Yeah, that's a great question because I know we talked about co-writing as kind of a foundation, but your mindset is another kind of foundation in terms of how you sit down and look at your writing. Like I always sort of imagine, you know, when somebody says like I have writer's block, that they're sitting at a desk alone with a big stack of lined paper and a bunch of pencils. You know, it's like, I don't know how to create out of this. And so setting up your mindset is a little bit like, you know, setting the stage for your writing that you're going to need some tools. I don't like to use the word toolbox. So I'm going to, I'm going to call it a caboodle. Anyone who grew up in the nineties knows what a caboodle is. Rocio, we'll talk about it later. Rocio's got getting an amazing. I'm uh, Peruvian. (laughs) (laughs) I know what a caboodle is. But you have to, you have to, um, one of the things you have to be able to pull out is maybe I'll be cheesy and say your thinking hat, but really kind of your atmosphere where you give yourself permission to write imperfectly for a certain amount of time. And when you are done, you're done with that writing, you're done with that commitment for that time, and you can just breathe out and do something else. And I think sometimes that is where writing gets really heavy is that you're writing and then you just sort of hold it all in and you feel like you're guilty. You feel guilty about not writing later. A sprint and co-writing and the right mindset can kind of just keep that in there. So, you know, one of the things is imperfect writing. You don't have to write amazing stuff the first time. I mean, I want to find that person who writes a whole manuscript, sends it in, no edits, because that's not going to happen. And so you, you know, you, you feel okay with that imperfection. And another mindset thing that the sprint definitely does in co-writing, they remind you that you're a scholar, that you're part of this community of thought. Because I wanted to note something about one of my favorite things about co-writing is is the chat. So we write in the chat like, hey, you know, post your wins or whatever. But the people in the chat are talking to each other and they are connecting with each other in ways that I didn't facilitate. They just happened because you're in this room with these other people and you're like, wow, they're working really hard. I'm working really hard. I'm an academic. And it really kind of brings you back into that space. And I don't know, it it just, it's a good space to be in. Yeah. And to be writing in. Yeah. And I think that's why I think like momentum and co-writing and what we're trying to do is 
really like kind of radical and different because it's really like, when do you get to like hype up other academics? In fact, like the default setting would be like, be jealous of other people or try to compare yourself and then feel bad. You know, like that's what, (laughs) that's what we usually do. And what we're trying to do is be like, no, you just go in there and you can feel free to hype up other people and you will get hyped in return, (laughs) you know, and And that kind of support in the sense of saying like, you did that good job, you know, like, which is not kind of part of the general culture of academia, but as the culture we're trying to build, you know, I think is, is really, that's a really important part. And, and really it's a mindset thing, but it's also a cultural shift that we're kind of trying to make over here in our corner of the internet. We're creating our culture. (laughs) We're, you know, refining it. Yeah. And, and in terms of mindset, I, personally feel that it's super important. I mean, from my experience, growth mindset and mindset itself, from a chronic disorder perspective, you know, it's, there's no way to feel worse than person syndrome than when you can't even be who you are or what you were. And so learning that is, is, and that happens to us all the time. So learning and relearning and, and momentum, we use this mindset, meaning momentum mindset, and almost see that with each person, each new person that comes in and even people who have been there for a while, that learning and relearning of who they are and owning the possibilities of who they can be and want to be and kind of like letting that out through the process and just 30 minutes because that decision is 30 minutes and, you know, they show up and, you know, every week and it's just beautiful to see. And one of the funny things for me to see sometimes is that one of the meetings that I facilitate with the Momentum clients are 10 minute meetings. Uh, These are like almost like orientation calls, check-in calls. That's what we call them, Mm check-in. And we get people who are super new to the programs, have no clue what we're doing, no idea that we even use the word community to really uh, achieve our goals. And so sometimes you get people who are very much not on board with anything mindset or why are we not just doing you know teaching tools and doing like almost like following a formula or you know writing every day and so I wanted to bring this up because I have two examples I'm not gonna mention names (laughs) but at least two people who kind of like came on board like to the timinacles like that like and, and even like said it and with their facial expressions yeah no that's that's not for me that's that's no way I'm not even I was like well just give it a try Okay, well, lo and behold, <laughs> there's some of the people I've seen the shift and and now they like faithfully show up in the months and meetings. So it's almost like sometimes we just need a reminder of we need the space to reflect. We need the space to grow. And that doesn't just come from the formula. You know, it has mm-hmm. to be, you know, a free space where we can just allow it to be and be aware of whatever it is going on. And even if, if we touch on themes, because every mindset meeting come up with a theme, even if the theme doesn't particularly apply to you in ways that you think it does, you can spin it around. And and, and a lot of people, that's what they write. Oh, I, at first, I didn't think that this theme was for me. But then actually, after answering the prompts and going to the small groups, it was like, OK, clearly I have to think about this. So it's the kind of thing that I, I really like to pair with the co-writing because it really gets the most out of being able to do that co-writing, you know, tackling that mindset component. Yeah, no, that's great. All right. So I think we've had a great conversation about sprinting and about co-writing. I want to let y'all say any last thing before we kind of sign off. This podcast will drop at the beginning of May. So I think May 5th, 4th, somewhere around there when it goes live for the first time. Do you want to say anything about this particular moment that we are experiencing in the semester and then perhaps about the summer? Because, you know, sometimes we get a lot of expectations about the summer. So any kind of (laughs) words, wise words for listeners who are in this particular moment of the semester. Gina, do you have anything you want to kind of tell people? Yeah, I really, when we get to crunch time, that time when you think you want to finish up all your projects because you want to start fresh in the summer and you, all your students have all their questions and all of your advisors need things all at the same time. I think one of the things, again, we're going back to mindset. One of the things that you have to do sometimes is recognize that you're not going to be able to do everything in the same day and then choose what to do and choose not to do. Like there are things that can wait 
and there are things that you can do not quite as perfectly as usual. And they're essentially balls you can drop a little bit, you know, they're the plastic balls, not the not the glass ones. Yeah. And yeah, so it is a process of attrition. You have to take things out so that you can do the other things. Yeah, I think that's like a really good way to go into the summer. And Rocio, I'm going to hand it over to you here. <laughs> Thanks, Gina. Yeah, I really like that idea of just realizing that everything is going to get done. To me, that that's also key in being flexible with it. Because even, you know, like this spring, I saw a lot of people who wanted to start it and they were excited and then, you know, things happen. And even in my own case, like I wanted to do some project and okay, I had to start it like later. But that's part of the process, right? Be learning how to be flexible without making that decision to, okay, I need to postpone this or half my goal or whatever without letting it get you down and work on that mindset. So as we are heading into, you know, May and then the summer, I feel that a lot of the things that are happening in the world and, you know, we're in the U.S., so in the U.S. can certainly not let us do a lot of the things that we want to do because we're worried and concerned about other things that are sometimes even life and death. So basically, I feel that being in a place, you know, whether ideally they come to momentum because I want to see them and we can support each other. But even if they were to find some other group and community, I think that's part of the key and making the most out of this year. We have to learn to be flexible because things are going to come our way and we're not going to feel like doing anything and with, you know, many good reasons. And at the same time, how do we make sure that we don't just go down the deep end and having a group, a community that can help you, whether it's a paid program, whether it's an actual like, I don't know, family, friends, academics in your family, you know, that's going to come a long way to continue exercising that flexibility, to continue knowing that not everything is going to get done, but you are going to be good and supportive throughout. And just like we get, we want to give. And so I think that's going to be key coming into the summer because you're right, we have so many expectations and I can already see that, you know, a lot of them are going to have to drop and the, the key is to not let that let us go down. How do we continue not just writing, but having the action that we want so that we can have a better place in our own community. So yeah, that's important. wonderful. Yeah. I'll just add to a little bit because you, you mentioned like this, like desire to do. And so there's like a lot of people right now who probably are feeling, I have so much to do and I have this, I want to do, do, do. There's this, you know, like it's the end of the semester. I got to do the grades. I got to do, I got to do. So I want everybody listening to think about what you're not going to do. <laughs> I want you to, instead of thinking about do, I want you to think about not do. <laughs> like I was on the Amplify call with a client and she was like, you know, she's like right back from maternity leave, also has a toddler. Like, and she's like, I feel like, you know, I need to do more, but I don't have any motivation to do it. And I said, stop, you need to not do, <laughs> you know, like that. And so a lot of times we say, I have a lack of motivation, especially in May. You might have hopes for the summer, but like right now you're exhausted. Think about, I'll leave everybody with the thought of what are you going to not do <laughs> for the next you know, few weeks? Or once you turn in grades, what will you spend your time not doing, <laughs> you know, actively <laughs> don't do. So thank you so much, Gina and Rocio, for being on the podcast today. Thank you. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, thank you. Aren't Gina and Rocio just the best? I love every time they've come on the podcast. All right, I jumped in to end off our podcast today with a little bit more about our new Writing Sprint Blueprint course. Now, Writing Sprint Blueprint is a how-to, how to create a writing sprint that will have a lot of those payoffs that the three of us talked about in this episode. But it doesn't just include the writing sprint course. It includes a lot of tools and extra bonuses that I think especially you all as podcast listeners are going to love. You get recorded video lessons with corresponding tools. So you don't need to make up anything by yourself. We give you a how-to video about how to create your writing sprint right? We call it the blueprint of a sprint. And then we also give you the actual PDF download tools that you can use to map out your sprint. 
We talk about successful sprint strategies. We give you a choosing your project rubric that's going to help you hone in on which project you want to do for your writing sprint. We have a sprint troubleshooting guide that will help you when you're implementing your sprint on your own. One of the things that we didn't talk about in the podcast today was that, you know, we were talking about this big community-wide sprint, but a bunch of people were like, well, that sprint time doesn't work out for me, so I'm just going to do a sprint on my own. And they use our techniques to run a sprint, you know, by themselves and are coming into the Facebook group and saying like, this was really successful. I turned in this article or I moved forward this project. And that's what you're going to create when you enroll in Writing Sprint Blueprint. We've got some bonuses that are going to help you though. And one of them is our say no scripts. <laughs> and that those are scripts that you can use to say no to stuff so people can't derail your sprint. And this is the one that I wanted to make sure I mentioned to you all as podcast listeners, and that is our Stick to the Plan Motivational Private Podcast. So when you enroll in Writing Sprint Blueprint, you get access to a private podcast. It plays right inside of your favorite podcast player, but it's not advertised in the Apple Store or anything like that. It is just for the Writing Sprint Blueprint participants. And what this does is it gives you just me in your earbuds every day during your sprint. So there's 10 motivational audios to listen to on the 10 weekdays that you're going to be sprinting. And this is something that is going to really help you with a big problem people have, you know, whenever they're writing, which is that they finally make a writing plan and then they don't really stick to the plan. So that's why it's called Stick to the Plan. It's motivational audio. They're short one to two minute motivational mini podcast episodes that you can listen to each day that you're sprinting to help support you during your sprint. It's like having me in your earbuds during the sprint process. So if you are a member of one of my programs already besides Momentum. So if you're in Amplify or Elevate or Navigate, we're gonna be giving you Writing Sprint Blueprint, so don't worry about that. <laughs> but if you haven't taken the jump into one of our programs yet and you wanna try something out that's really accessible but also impactful, then for $27, we would love to have you join the Writing Sprint Blueprint course. So you can just go to writingsprintblueprint.com. We'll link it up in the show notes and enroll today. Thank you so much for spending your valuable time loving on yourself and your writing by listening to this episode. If you're feeling pulled in a thousand directions and can't seem to carve out time to write, I've got a solution for you. Go grab my 10 ways to make time to write cheat sheet. Just go to kathymazak.com slash podcast dash time to learn my best quick tips for putting writing at the center of your career where it belongs. We'll link that up in the show notes. Just go to kathymazak.com slash podcast dash time.